Hi, I'm Dr. Pamela Rui, Professor and Extension Milk Quality Veterinarian at the University of Wisconsin-Madison. Today we're going to be discussing animal health regulations for organic dairy herds. In the United States, the National Rules for Certification of Organic Dairy Farms are maintained by the United States Department of Agriculture and the actual uh, program uh, that brought uniformity to the U.S. rules began in 2002. The U.S. Department of Agriculture website contains the rules um, required to attain certification and um, the management practices that need to be followed to maintain certification as an organic dairy producer. And this website is also the site of the national list which contains the products um, which are allowed for use on organic dairy herds. Now when we talk about organic livestock health care, we really have to start with the basis that the most important aspect for maintaining dairy animal health is to have a sound preventive medicine practices. And these preventive livestock health care practices are basically the same on both conventional farms as they are on organic farms. But for organic dairy producers, the National Organic Program actually lists some of the things that organic producers should think about as part of their preventive program. Those things would include the, uh, uh, having an appropriate site, feeding appropriate rations, providing appropriate housing, uh, allowing the animals to express their freedom of movement, using management practices that minimize pain and stress, and also importantly for today's discussion, um, the National Organic Program strongly encourages the use of vaccines and appropriate veterinary biologics. So vaccines are encouraged for use on all farms to aid in the prevention of disease, but on, um, in, many, in some instances animals do develop disease. And this is where the U.S. organic standards become somewhat confusing. The U.S. organic standards require the producer to provide appropriate treatment in all instances of animal disease, but they prohibit the use of products that aren't on the national list. And if animals receive treatments because they need them um, in order not to die or for an animal welfare purpose, that animal may not be sold as organic nor may her milk be sold as organic. So there's this kind of catch-22 whereas um, the appropriate treatment must be supplied, animal welfare must be, must be maintained, but the, there's a disincentive for that to a certain extent because producers have to weigh the balance between is the animal sick enough so that I really want to provide a treatment that's going to make her be removed from my herd versus um, can I treat her uh, with approved products and still maintain animal health. So that can be somewhat confusing. The other um, issue that's, that confuses um, people somewhat is that the U.S. organic standards are developed and administered by the United States Department of Agriculture, but the FDA requirements still apply to organic dairy herds. So for example, there's no use of unlicensed drugs on either conventional or organic dairy herds. There's a requirement when some drugs are used in an extra label fashion that there's a veterinary client patient relationship. And all dairy farms, regardless of management strategy, must not administer drugs in violation of FDA guidelines. So when we look at maintaining animal health on organic dairy farms, there are many products and many, that can be used and there's many diseases where the um, regulations uh, for organic status um, really allow for use of appropriate drugs. Vaccines, as we've mentioned earlier, can be used to prevent disease. Iodine-based T-dips can be used to reduce the spread of mastitis. Aspirin can be used to uh, reduce uh, inflammation. And for animals that receive bloat, um, they can receive paloxylene 
and those are all examples of very appropriate treatments that are allowed under the National Organic Guidelines. There's also some products that can be used in emergency situations and some products that require veterinary supervision for use. Products that would fall into this um, category would be things like Flunix and Megalamine, which may be needed in some circumstances to, as an anti-inflammatory. Uh, xylazine, which can be given with an extended withholding period and under veterinary supervision, and that's a drug that may be used for sedation. And things like oxytocin, which may be needed in some uh, certain obstetrical situations. There's also products which, under USDA um, guidelines, can't be used on organic dairy farms. And importantly, no animal drugs other than vaccinations can be used in the absence of illness. So animals have to be ill in order for drugs to be used. Um, on organic dairy farms, dairy cattle can't receive hormones for growth promotion. They can't have a routine usage of parasiticides but the National Organic Guidelines do allow for emergency use of ivermectins, which may be necessary in some climatic conditions um, or um, conditions where you've had enormous exposure to um, parasites. In those instances, you need to go back to the National Organic List, look at the rules, and follow the appropriate withholding periods. So, what should we be taking back to the barn? Animal health management on organic dairy herds and conventional dairy herds is very similar. In both instances, the focus should be on prevention, and in most instances, that focus will be successful. Organic dairy producers should also remember that occasionally some animals will probably develop diseases that will require conventional treatments, and those conventional treatments should be uh, administered to those animals so that we can maintain the highest levels of animal well-being. Don't look at this as a failure of organic management. Even though the animal must not be used for organic production, we've done the right thing for the animal. Thirdly, the National Organic List um, is available and contains guidelines on products that can be used. Go to that list, go to the website, and check it if you've got a question. And finally, for all herds, both organic dairy herds and conventional herds, just Let's keep in mind that products that aren't approved by the FDA cannot be marketed for use as treatments for any dairy cows. So there's a few places we can get some more information. You can go to the USDA website for more information about the organic program. There's some resources uh, for uh, uh, residue avoidance. This especially applies to conventional herds. And then um, the FDA.gov site has an explanation of the requirements for a veterinary client-patient relationship. Thank you.